everyone good morning I hope you're doing well today I just wanted to do a quick tutorial type video I posted this one on my Instagram and in a few groups and everyone was really pre pleased really kind said how cute it was and I had a lot of comments about how I did my snow here at the bottom so I found another page that I could just kind of sort of play with and show you some different techniques and how I did it and then you can kind of adjust it to what you need for the upcoming snow season. I guess I should say depending on where you are. <laughs> so this is the page I'm going to do and I picked this one um, just because it's got the zentangly stuff at the bottom and I'm not really into coloring those so I figured it would be okay if I covered it up with paint. It wouldn't be too big a deal. Also I can show you a few different things up here on the sky for snowflakes. Um, I have another book. Let me see if I can grab it real quick without sticking my arm too far in the camera. So I did this page in this book. And I did all the little snowflakes coming down. So you can also do that. You can put white dots in front of your image to make it look like it's snowing. So that is one way you can go. You can also do paint your background first. I'm not sure if I have my book right here. I don't think I do. But you can also color your background blue first and then put your white dots in. It's really up to you. I am not the kind of person who wants to take a lot of time and color around all these dots. So I usually wash the sky blue and go back and put my dots in or whatever color I may want my sky to be. So to start with, I use metallic ice blue. This is folk art. They're at Walmart. They're around a dollar. Um, any kind of blue you can lighten with white depending on what you are trying, what color you want your snow to be. And then just white acrylic paint. I buy the larger things of acrylic paint because I go through a lot of white and black. So I also, on the page I did, see if I can show you used glitterific paint on the bottom that is not necessary um, it'll still look fine without it but I want to try out this glitterific so this is glitterific try to oh sorry just trying to not shine the light right um, glitterific from Walmart folk art around a dollar they also come in pink and other fun colors for Christmas so what I do is I put a little on a plate. So I got my metallic ice blue, my white, and my darker blue. And for down here, I do not want the brush strokes of just flat painting with a paintbrush. I want the dabble effect like fluffy snow. So what I do, and fair warning, some cotton balls are better than others for this. Some fall apart and stick to your fingers and it becomes quite a mess. So just fair warning some cotton balls will do this better than others and I think the first thing I want to do is mix a little bit of this darker blue with this white and I want it fairly light blue I don't want it to be straight white but I don't want that dark blue color so I think that looks pretty good notice it doesn't take a whole lot of paint so you don't have to like fill your plate full. You can just keep mixing it as you go. If your colors don't match exactly, it doesn't affect it a whole lot because snow is not one consistent color. So it has a lot of variations depending on. And then I just dab it on there. So as you can see, it's going to take a few layers, but I'm going to show you why I'm doing it like this to start with. But then I put a little white over that blue and I can fix the border. The border is not a big deal if it gets covered. But as you can see, it'll take a few layers to cover those black lines, but you want to keep the same steady blotting effect. Then when your cotton ball starts to get dry, it will start to pull apart. So it's important to keep that fairly wet. So then I'm going to take an even straighter white and just kind of dab it toward the top. White is 
Snow is whiter at the top and bluer at the bottom due to shadows. So it works well to do it like this. And then if you want, you can take your metallic and just kind of give it a shiny ice appearance. Like I said, depending on the snow you're going for, if you want to add a little purple, if you want to have it straight, white, and fluffy, it's really just up to you. That is all I did to get my snow effect. It was really fun to play with. It's not a lot of work. Doesn't take a crazy amount of expensive supplies, which is like my favorite thing because I am on a tight budget. So everything I do, I like to be able to do it where if I need to replicate it, I don't have to buy, you know, anything crazy expensive. So going in with the dark again, just kind of adding another layer on bottom. Just going to go across. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning here, so I might have a little one up peeking in shortly. She should be getting up fairly soon. I tried to beat her up to get some food in the crock pot for dinner. So I think I like how that looks there. The black lines are fairly covered. So then I'm going to take that white again. And it's okay if you cover your snowmen because it just looks like they are behind this little rift of snow or in a snow drift. One thing about snow is it is never a flat straight line. So when you're doing snow, you want it to be kind of up and down like hills because snow doesn't fall even, it doesn't blow even. So. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna drag it up here a little ways so it looks like there's snow behind them. I don't want that dark of a blue though. And you can even mix it with your cotton ball. Take a little of that metallic. And I am gonna do another layer of the white across the top just to make sure that that white stands out. We want to make sure it looks like snow and not like they're swimming. So there is that. And, um, the paper in Camellia de Erico's book, The Cute and Creepy, I did my first snow attempt on is way, way thicker than this paper. So you can see how it's kind of warping. That's just because it's thinner paper. It doesn't bother me a whole lot, but just a fair warning. The thicker paper you use, the less warping you will have. These pages, I put a lot of coats of paint on the back. Like they're almost stiff because they've got so much paint on them and they didn't warp at all. So paper is a big factor in snow. So I'm gonna add a little more white, giving it a second to dry there. That was a lot of white. Might mix a little more blue. You can still see the lines right here. It's bugging me. I need to swap cotton balls. It's falling apart. Okay, taking the white and just dabbing it straight in the white. And then I want the tops white. And I am putting a fair amount of white there because I'm gonna blend it, just in case you're wondering. Holy cow, she just put a whole chunk of it there. So I am gonna blend that color up with this guy. And then I'm just gonna go along the bottom of my snowman, and I'm not gonna go all the way down, just at the very top where the snowman touched the snow. Remember, you want to go up and down, and snow is higher in some places. Not to be afraid to cover your image. This one was a bad cotton ball. So, 
can still see the blue, the lines a little bit. So I'm going to go one shade darker. Things there toward the bottom anyway. I'll just go ahead and add a little bit of a darker. And the more you dab it like that, the more it'll blend. It just won't sit and stay blue. And I am a little bit of a perfectionist, so this is probably a lot of paint on this type of paper, but I don't like the lines peeking through. There, I like that. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the um, glitter, the Glitterific, just because when I went to use the Glitterific, I was a little bit surprised at how clumpy it was versus how paint pours out. So this is the Glitterific. This does not pour out. I mean, it does if you squeeze it and bounce it, but this is really thick glitter. So the best thing I found for this glitter is to take a Q-tip and then squeeze it up like that and just grab some on your Q-tip. Now when you daub this, you want to be very careful because it is very thick, it is very, and it's going to want to pull up your other paint. So we want to dry it a little bit first. Dry, and hopefully the sparkles will help take away from the couple little lines that are still showing on the bottom. Okay, so I'm already losing some. You can take your finger and just lightly add some every, depending on how thick of a glitter effect you're looking for. And if you don't want any glitter, not a problem. When I added it to my other paper, I thought it would be more like the sun catching the, <laughs> the sparkle. But it was fun to play with, so just lightly. I don't want too much in one spot. It is fairly movable, but a lot of the glitter will stick to your finger. So you don't want to have to smear it too much if you don't have to. right there. I can still see that line peeking out at me for being stubborn. So that is my snow on the bottom effect. For the top, there are many ways to go. You can color it with marker. You can color it with pastel and add your white dots. Paint it blue. And so, I'm trying to think what color I want. And I'm thinking I might try it. Ooh, I don't know. Probably should have. I don't know if I want to paint it or hit it with marker. I think I'm going to just color it with marker real quick. So the thing about coloring it with marker is that you will be able to see the circle still where your snowflake goes. So that is not a problem and I need a blotter sheet. Um, for reference, I did get asked, acrylic does not bleed through your paper. So because it's wet, it will crinkle a little, but it should not bleed color of any kind through. And I do plan on putting washi tape around this border, so I'm not real worried about going outside the lines. And I'm not going to make you watch me color this whole thing, so please don't panic. I'm just going to do a little area. You can do a blue sky if you're going for a real frozen effect. But I wanted to show you. Going in with the pink. And then if you want, you can take, oh, the blue. I love my big markers, nothing fancy. Except for that is the one I'm using on a different project. It doesn't work quite as well. 
dried out markers still have a purpose, just so you know. You can just kind of blend those. And they blend really well. Big markers are awesome for that. Like I said, I have a washi tape to put around the border. So I like how that's looking. So I'm going to color in this little square and then I will show you the snowflakes. And then I will come back after I get it all colored and show you the final product. Or if you watch my completed pages, hopefully it will be in there. This is a very cute page. I want to thank Jamie for this book. This is another one of the happy mails she got me. I am just really putting her happy mail to the test this time around. She got me so many cute books, I just can't stay out of them. Like I said, nothing super expensive. A dollar paint and a pack of Bic markers. So just kind of making that blue blend a little. Don't want any real harsh lines here. And the way you accomplish that is you just go over it a couple times. Color in circles so you don't get that streaky effect. Okay, so I like how that looks. I'm going to take the Q-tip and you can do straight white dots. All you have to do is just follow, and if your Q-tip starts to get a wild, crazy spot, you just roll it and it'll stick back together. You can add a couple metallic dots. You don't have to have just straight white dots. I will show you how different the white dots stick out, but your snow does not have to be white. It's not a law. It is your book, your project. As you can tell by my pink background, I think I do like the white on this color though. And that is all you have to do. If you want some smaller snowflakes so it doesn't look so placed, I need to find my good gel pen. I only have like one good gel pen left. I really need to go supply shopping. Maybe after Christmas, I have a birthday after Christmas, maybe I'll get some extra money to get some supplies. But you can just go in and you can add just a few little. Now, I will warn you, gel pen will pick up the pink and your dots will sort of start to turn pink. But you can just go over them again. It's not that big a deal. But that is how my page is looking so far. So I will hopefully get this finished today in between children and dinner. And I will post a completed page at the end. I thank you for watching. Share with your friends. If you have anything else you want to see, anything on any of my pages you're wondering how I did, please let me know. I would love to show you. Like I said, I do not use anything. I don't have Copics or Ohuhus or anything like that. Mine are just all basic art products. So um, I thank you for watching and I will see you soon. All right, guys, I'm back working in the Christmas coloring book doing the snow and I thought I would go ahead and show you how the page ended up before I ended this video. Once again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you want to see anything else, um, let me know and I will do my best to see what I can do. So this is how my page turned out. I think it turned out pretty cute. The swashy tape matched really well. And I think the colors go together really well. So that is my finished page. These are just the white acrylic with a Q-tip, alcohol marker, and then I did a little of this old <laughs> um, CoverGirl eyeshadow just to tint my snowmen a little bit so they didn't, they weren't just white on the paper. I did not do the middle of their face. I just did where the shadows are. So that is how that turned out. I thank you for watching. Have a good day.